Oh, insane, insane. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, this is insane. I know I was like joking at the beginning that like these songs were going to be better than the album, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer person. And today I'm going to be reacting to the deluxe tracks from Melly Martinez's Portals project. So let's go. Camera's wonky. We're all a bit wonky, aren't we? Cool. Okay. So my portals reaction went up. I'm sure you've all seen it. I loved portals, and actually, the more I listen to it as like a full album without any breaks or anything, the more I'm really kind of understanding. It's like really, really cool. But I know that the reception's been pretty split. A few people have said that these that these other songs are great. So maybe these songs are going to be kind of better than the main album. I've got a question for you. Did you enjoy that song that was playing in the intro? Well, have I got news for you? <laughs> that is actually my song and it's called Criminal. You can stream it over on, on any streaming platform of your choice or you can actually watch the lyric video here. I'll link it in the corner. Thank you for supporting my music. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe for deep dive reactions that really get into the artistry behind the artist and if you want to support me even further and be part of the community then you can join me over on patreon where one of the benefits is actually being part of the exclusive discord server called the crying club where everybody shares their music it's great it's a really nice vibe let's go on to this we've got three songs mine a few with me you just get a microphone in front of me and i'm like it's just i just need to sing okay so this is powder <laughs> got more of that electric guitar thing. Ooh, okay. Love the mixture between like the tender delivery and the form and change on the voice. Nice. Oh my god. Oh, this is really nice. I love the gang vocal mixed with this kind of tender sadness. Really nice. The way that they've used the formant vocal, it's almost like a kind of Hunchback and Notre Dame effect. Story character, you know, someone who sounds a bit deformed, but is actually really tender and has a lot of sensitivity, you know? Mm. I can't quite tell what the lyrics are though. <laughs> Sounds like all these people kind of coming together to sing in solidarity. Again, the production is top notch. That's something that really thought about portals in general, and the drum production particularly. Mm. Nice. Ah, oh, I really like this song. As a standalone song, it's just really nicely written. I yeah, I just love it. Yeah. I really liked that. Yeah, there was so much about that that I really liked. I think it was like the tenderness of it. But it's almost like an alien tenderness, you know? Which I think makes it sound as if, you know, the character that she's built with all the kind of makeup and everything feels like that character was singing that song just through the way the vocals were treated. And I just, I love this idea that like, even something that sounds kind of alien can still also be really sensitive and emotional. There's an empathy there. Even though the voice is like deformed, you still empathize with that character. I think it's really, really, really cool. And really is like, you know, a storytelling trope that isn't really done through sound design. I've never heard that kind of thing be told through sound design. I just think it's really fab. And just like from a, on a most basic level, like I was really vibing with that song as well. Like really enjoyed it. Again, the production is off the charts and it ties into the rest of the album sonically through this electric guitar with the phaser on it, which like I was saying in, the, in my album reaction, is kind of taking me to like Red Hot Chili Peppers place. <laughs> Let's look at the lyrics because couldn't really tell. And I'm really interested to see how these are going to, play into the narrative because the portals album itself was literally complete you know it was a cycle that was complete it ended how it began and it felt like a complete piece and so i wonder how these songs fit into that story you know powder 
Pow, pow, powder. Don't want to know where you go when you aren't alone. You'd rather stay a night, too much to believe. Blood falling out from your nose and I'm wondering how. So the powder is cocaine. That's like the classic visual of cocaine is like someone having the nosebleed, right? How you glamorise your pain, wear it on display. That idea of glamorising your pain by like taking drugs and going out and partying all night. It's like there is a certain glamour to that kind of club night style, but the centre of why they're doing it is pain you know that the reason why they're doing it is because they feel alone or alone or you know something like that oh my god the way that she put that into just one lyric is so great oh my god and I know it's a cry for help go help yourself I opened a million doors you never go it's passport and no return when will we learn alert me when this shit is over so someone close to Melanie is obviously having this spiral going and having this kind of cocaine spiral and she's like I've tried enough to help you and you're not helping yourself so I'm having to draw a line as much as it hurts you know maybe it's like a sibling this is really giving me sister brother energy maybe chaotic sibling and she is kind of like now doing the tough love bit I can't answer now spent the rent on a cart one way street to the stars clean it up watch you die it's yours to decide Wow, this is really powerful. Show me a picture you paint of someone else, lived a double life, wish I was surprised. Eyes rolling to the back of your head and I'm wondering how I recognise your face, put it all to waste. There's like a real kind of like difficulty, I think, in what Melanie's having to do. And there is something very difficult when you can see a loved one going through something. But like the, the problem is that it doesn't matter what you do, like you can't help them if they're not willing to help themselves. And like at the end of the day, they, there does have to come a point where you have to kind of like draw the line. But it's obviously a heart wrenching thing to do. And maybe that's like the reason Melanie's written this song because is because she needs to get those feelings out there because she feels guilty, maybe. Yeah, fuck me. That's beautiful. Does it really connect to the themes on the album? Not so much, really. Maybe she wrote this song within this era and kind of thought, actually, this doesn't actually fit the theme of, you know, life and death and the circle of life, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's why it ended up as a deluxe track. Gorgeous, gorgeous, though. OK, let's go on to the next one. This is Pluto. Ooh. I'm hauling an outdated show. I love that. Wow. It's like we're on a carousel. Wow. Amazing production. Fucking insane. This has given me like crazy carnival energy. Oh, those drums. Oh, God, you could just feel them. Just love those drums. Oh, she doesn't usually do much vibrato, does she? This is, this is so brilliantly written. The way her vocal performance sits in the middle, really grounding this kind of like slightly demented energy is like really good. Okay, there's a sense of rebirth in this. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, insane, insane, it's insane, it's so good. Oh. Oh. Wow. I know I was like joking at the beginning that like these songs were going to be better than the album, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> I don't want to detract from what Portals was because as a, an album concept it was so astonishing but I do think that if there was a weakness is that actually maybe individually the songs don't feel as strong whereas these two so far very much feel that way you know fuck this is like oh god I loved that that like that's real like when you think it's over but it's not. And then it went into that massive section. That was just so astonishing, so satisfying. It really just went off and was so exciting. Oh my God, mental, love it. I think I was so, so effective because the whole song was really building tension with that kind of mm, da, da, mm, da, da, waltzing you off. But like the way in which like the drum production, that gorgeous drum production really built up the tension alongside those things meant that when we then had that kind of kickoff moment, it was just ultra, ultra satisfying. Ugh. Amazing. Oh, fuck me. Shit, I love that so much. 
Pluto. Hauling an outdated shell helped me let go. The walls around me are so close, caving in. Oh no, some of the friends I thought were forever. And now I want to sever the ties. The seats have been spotted and I'm no longer doubting. I think that's finally time. So there's a real sense of the rebirth, but framed slightly differently. Like this one's less about internal change and actually more about external change like cutting ties from certain friends maybe people in her life that she feels are toxic pluto destroy me kill me off slowly i'll bathe in my ashes rise like a phoenix it is a very similar story to the to the main album but actually like this song seems to be dealing in themes that are like slightly different and maybe don't fit the vibe i'll sit with my silence fix all my conflicts show me the demons i'm hiding reveal all the darkness in me kill me and bring me back to life. There's nothing in this tired town for me no more. What once was home is hell I can't manage, so send me to packing it up. Everything's blurry, I don't want to worry, the pain from this growing is rough. Okay, so she's returned home and she's really struggling with the fact that she doesn't feel like she fits in in her hometown anymore. It just feels like too much. I think like I really am interested in her fascination with this idea of like the journey from childhood into adulthood becoming almost like a death and rebirth like I was found like whenever I went to new places like when I went to uni or when I moved to Japan or when I went traveling or whatever it was a chance for me to like start fresh you know have my hair different you know kind of try on a different person for a while and I think that's kind of what we all do when we grow up is like especially in our 20s we go through all these experience where we where we do kind of kill our old selves and then through that process of like becoming a new person maybe a couple of times you then actually really discover like which bits of your childhood were actually quite important to you and which new things you've discovered are actually parts of yourself that you never would have discovered had you not done that. And yeah, I feel like I've had multiple moments of that throughout my life and kind of it helped me become like more well-rounded as a person. And so yeah, I'm super intrigued with the way in which she's kind of extrapolated that idea and turned it into the metaphor of the cycle of life, you know, high level kind of metaphor artistry. Like, cool. Okay, let's go on to the final one. This is Milk of the Siren. I was talking about sirens in my album reaction. Mm. Almost like similar to the, the vocal at the beginning of Tunnel Vision. Drown. Oh fucking hell, Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Insane. Incredible. Oh my god, the sound design is off the fucking charts. Getting a political feel, maybe. Yeah. I love this kind of like really like laboured six eight kind of thing where we're like when these fuckers all drown. Oh this is insane! Fucking amazing! That way that oh my god, it's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, oh my god, the sound design. I'm just so, so, so astonished. <laughs> this section is so powerful. Just the heaviness of the, that drum and guitar with those vocals. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh my god. I saw somebody online hinting that maybe uh, Florence the Machine might do like a version of that, which would be incredible. That was just like astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. I adored that. The sound design in that was just out of this fucking world and kept you on your toes. Like that like bit where it built up into the into that section, the section with the dun 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 so powerful but also keeps you on your toes because you never because it's like so unexpected. It goes dun 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 and then all the drums and guitar are gone and it's just the 
chorus of vocals. It's so cool. And like, and then that last chorus of vocals goes, oh, and it gets like filtered away. And then the time when it comes around next, it doesn't get filtered away. It just kind of goes like this. It's, oh my God fucking insane i'm obsessed it's so good it's so 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 good and it's like as much as the main album i found exciting like this is like these three songs particularly are just next level they're absolutely next level how bizarre that they didn't end up featuring on the main album but i guess i mean i understand it artistically but it's just like they're so good though <laughs> you know could you have worked them in maybe changed a few lyrics <laughs> most deluxe tracks apart from maybe taylor are usually not as good but for them to be actually arguably better songs i think actually if you were to take them as songs outside the concept of the album i'd say that these are the best songs like <laughs> which is kind of mental but yeah there you go let's look at the lyrics before i kind of give you the full vibe drink from the leche of sirens summon the sailors in town strangle the fear of deciding which ones deserve to drown well, wow, okay. So f more like female power, you know? Engraved in our memory, the harm that was done. Our mothers, the witches they banished and burned. Yeah, patriarchal sexism. All of our sisters were killed and abused by sword-swinging men who would always accuse. Tired of silence and being polite, your legs turned to shimmering scales in the night. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Oh my god, it's fucking poetry. It's this idea that women have been hunted and abused over like years and years and years, like hundreds and hundreds of years, which is something that we that that was a theme in the in the main album. You know the damage that was put on Melanie by the sexism within our society. But now she's kind of empowering those women and actually saying, no, now's your time to actually not give a shit and just be powerful and to kill all the men with your like mermaid siren. It's insane. It's amazing. Let them drown. Let them drown. Don't feel bad when these fuckers all drown. It's just, yeah, like, wow. It's kind of like encouraging women to be unapologetic, you know? Tenderness worn on the skin like a dress, nurture these men, pull them out of their mess they steal the resources destroy the land belittle the power of the feminine hand incredible bury their souls in a cove by the light celestial dip all that ego and pride the celestial dip ah oh, ah oh, god the lyricism on this is just amazing it's so cinematic it's so i could just picture this like like midnight blue landscape looking out over the sea with this small town with all these like men who are driven by greed, by power, by lust, all getting their comeuppance by Melanie who sat on a rock singing the song of the siren, luring them to their deaths. But actually the reason why they die, it's their own fault. It's their own greed. And that's really the moral of this traditional folk tale is that if you give in to greed and lust and all those kinds of things, then you will be lured to your death. And she's just reframing that story and actually telling women, you shouldn't feel bad for other people's lust and greed. That is not your problem. And so it kind of becomes this empower empowerment anthem in the context of this like folk tale. It's just so great. I love it so Nothing wrong with a little havoc. It's fun when the shit hits the fan. So guillotine their heads by shouting, cut them off, leave the waters red. Don't feel bad when these fuckers all drown. Absolutely fucking insane. It is actually balmy to think that these are three of the best songs. These are maybe three of my favourite songs she's ever done, actually. And I think if you were to take each song by a song by song basis, the strongest ones, I think, would be these three death, womb, evil, and maybe nymphology or fairy soiree. Do you know what I mean? Like, these are among the best of the whole thing individually as a song, as much as they don't really tie into the concept of the album. That is where the album has the strength, you know? Amazing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so glad I reacted to these because I was a little bit like, oh, deluxe tracks, like, mm, one, yeah. but actually it's so good. It's actually so good. If you haven't seen my K-12 reaction, I've reacted to the songs here and the movies here. Click on those, watch those now. Go on. You can do it. I know you love it.